Good morning and welcome to Walking with Jesus Through the Word, one chapter per day. I'm Pastor Jason Van Bemmel from Forest Hill Presbyterian Church. And on this 917th day together in the Word of God, we come back to the prophet Jeremiah to pick up with Jeremiah 35. And yes, I'm still here on vacation and uh, having a wonderful time. If you want to know what what I'm seeing, what it looks like out here, I'll show you a little bit when we get into this. Um, there's the boat dock and there's the lake beautiful it's a beautiful beautiful early july day nice breeze blowing um, so it's good to be with you here and i uh, hope you're doing well where you are and let's get into the word of god let's pray heavenly father thank you for your word true and righteous altogether are you speak your word to our hearts and draw us closer to Jesus, our Savior. It's in his name we pray. Amen. All right, let me adjust this a little bit. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 35. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord in the days of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, go to the house of the Rechabites and speak with them and bring them to the house of the Lord into one of the chambers then offer them wine to drink. So I took Jezaniah, the son of Jeremiah, son of Habaziniah, and his brothers, and all his sons, and the whole house of the Rechabites. I brought them to the house of the Lord, into the chamber of the sons of Hanan, the son of Ig Igdaliah, the man of God, who was near the chamber of the officials, above the chamber of Maaseah, the son of Shalom, keeper of the threshold. Then I set before the Rechabites pitchers of wine, <coughs> excuse me, pitchers full of wine and cups. And I said to them, drink wine. But they answered, we will drink no wine. For Jonadab, the son of Rechab, our father, commanded us, you shall not drink wine, neither you nor your sons forever. You shall not build a house, you shall not sow seed, you shall not plant or have a vineyard, but you shall live in tents all your days, that you may live many days in the land where you sojourn. We have obeyed the voice of Jonadab, the son of Rechab, our father, in all that he commanded us, to drink no wine all our days, ourselves, our wives, our sons, or our daughters, and not to build houses to dwell in. We have no vineyard, or field, or seed, but we have lived in tents, and have obeyed and done all that Jonadab, our father, commanded us. But when Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came up against the land, we said, Come, and let us go to Jerusalem, for fear of the army of the Chaldeans and the army of the Syrians. So we are living in Jerusalem. Then the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Go and say to the people of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, Will you not receive instruction? And listen to my words, declares the Lord. The command that Jonadab, the son of Rechab, gave to his sons to drink no wine has been kept, and they drink none to this day, for they have obeyed their father's command. I've spoken to you persistently, but you have not listened to me. I have sent to you all my servants, the prophets, sending them persistently, saying, Turn now every one of you from his evil way, and amend your deeds, and do not go after other gods to serve them, and then you shall dwell in the land that I gave to you and your fathers. But you did not incline your ear or listen to me. The sons of Jonadab, the son of Rechab, have kept the command that their father gave them, but this people has not obeyed me. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of hosts, the God of Israel, behold, I am bringing upon Judah and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem all the disaster that I have pronounced against them because I have spoken to them and they have not listened. I have called to them and they have not answered. But to the house of the Rechabites, Jeremiah said, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, because you have obeyed the command of Jonadab your father and kept all his precepts, and done all that he commanded you. Therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Jonadab, the son of Rechab, shall never lack a man to stand before me. 
and stand before me as a way of saying never to fail to have a man to serve before me in my presence. So this is a very unusual chapter in that we're introduced to these people who, who live um, a very unusual life. Uh, they're, they're originally part of the Kenites, um, which is where um, Caleb, uh, son of Jephunneh of the Kenites, um, they're, they're associated with Jehu's purge, being involved with that, but they're nomadic. They're nomadic. They, they had no home. They lived in tents for hundreds of years, and they never drank wine, and they never planted crops, because their founding father of their tribe told them that they're not to do so. So they were obedient to their father's commands for generation upon generation. And, and the Lord singles them out. They, they've come into Jerusalem to seek shelter because Nebuchadnezzar and the armies of Babylon have moved into the into the area. And of course, everybody's under threat. There's this huge army going through, killing everybody and taking off captives. So they're, you know, they're looking for shelter and they're, and they're going in to be with the people of God in Jerusalem to wait it out uh, and, and to trust in the Lord. But they are so remarkable. Jonadab, the son of Rechab, gave a command to his sons generations ago and they kept it. It was hard. Compared to what Jonadab, son of Rechab, commanded his people to do, the commands of the Lord are, are not burdensome. They're, they're relatively easy. It's in terms of the civil law of God, and, you know, to basically be just and equitable and treat people right. And again, the last chapter we saw a couple days ago, Jeremiah 34, let the Hebrew slaves go free every seven years. They might say, oh, it's too hard to do that. Too hard? These people are living in tents for generation after generation. Have you ever been stunned at how dedicated and obedient people can be to man-made commands. Look at the way that some of the Hasidic Jews live. Look at the way that some Islamic people live. Look at the way that some Mormon people live. Look at the dedication and zeal that some Jehovah's Witnesses have. Look at the way that Amish people live or Mennonite people. Now, for the most part, they're following commandments of men, not commandments of God. Some of them are better than others. But they're all following commandments of men, not directly commandments from God. And yet, look how dedicated, look how faithful, look how obedient, look how observant they can be. We're given commands by God. Are we as dedicated? Are we as committed? Or do we say, oh, it's Sunday, but you know, the ravens are coming on at 1 o'clock, and Pastor Jason gets really long-winded, and we probably won't get back in enough time, so let's just skip it. We'll watch it on television. Or, yeah, I know that I should tithe, but I've had my eye on this car that I really want, and I could get something less expensive, but if I just cut back on my tithes, you know, God will understand, I can get the better car. How often do we cut corners? Like, oh, I know I'm not supposed to look at that stuff, but, you know, it's not hurting anybody. I know I shouldn't have said that lie, but it's a little white lie that won't really hurt anybody. We don't get saved by our obedience. Make that clear. But God wants our obedience because he wants our hearts. He wants our love. He wants our affection. He wants our devotion to him. Isn't he worth it? Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for this chapter that challenges us to look at our hearts and look at our lives and be more obedient to you, our Father. We pray this in Jesus' name. That's Jeremiah 35. Tomorrow we're going to go on to chapter 36. Have a blessed day in the Lord.